Good evening. In what should be a summer feast of football, sadly corruption at the highest level has rubbed off of what could be a most special summer. In reality, Qatar won the vote under controversial circumstances and what turned out to be many a bung and a backhander to be able to host the rights of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Was that the right decision? Categorically not if you speak to anybody that understands the basic rules of bribery and the fact that there was a lot taken for Qatar to get that World Cup. On a country with an appalling human rights record, it seemed wrong for us to try to recreate the World Cup there. So we put a vote to everyone on the, on the Travel Sports Universe. Where would you like to see the 2022 World Cup hosted? The overwhelming winner was Spain. So 40 years on from Spain 82, we're going to revisit that World Cup with the current format, with a few changes to a few teams. We've got a banging tournament to bring you. Making their debut tonight for the first time since, well, you know when. England play in the opening game of the World Cup and we have highlights of the uh, coverage against Iran. They won the vote. They're in the group stages. Scotland play the United States. Their first World Cup since 1998. We have all the action from that game. They've been away for a while, but the Netherlands return to the world stage. They've got the uh, Africa Cup of Nation champions in their match. And one of the vote winners was Italy, replacing Qatar. They place Ecuador in the opening game, and we've got all the action from that. So this is the draw that was set up for the actual World Cup. Qatar, Wales, Saudi Arabia, Australia, Canada and Costa Rica are the replacements that we're going to make. Don't worry, Australia are just moving down to Group F. But there are some changes to be made and here they are. Italy win the votes and they get through into Group A. Scotland overwhelming favourites and voted through into Group B. So we will have England Scotland playing at the World Cup. Ukraine replaced Saudi Arabia in Group C, another popular side. No surprise there with what's going on. Peru, New Zealand and Australia were also sides that were voted heavily to come in. So Costa Rica replaces and Canada sadly that don't appear on the Evo web patch, that's why. As for everything else, Group G and Group H remains completely untouched. Well, our coverage of the World Cup gets going funny enough with England. They play around today at the opening game taking place at the Santiago Bernabeu in Madrid. England's white shirts might fill at home with the Royal Madrid colours matching the same. For England though, they've had a brilliant couple of years here at Trevor Sports. When we reenacted the tournament not long ago in the first Trevor Sports World Cup, they made it all the way to the final where sadly they were beaten by France. And now this is broken through. Kylian Mbappe! And there is the breakthrough in the World Cup final! And of course, the last time we reenacted them at the European Championships two years ago, England were victorious. Alexander Arnold to Sterling. Good football this now. Rashford. Walk for a moment, he might get the shot off. He still has possession. He still has possession. Rashford with a shot! He's got it again! He's got it again! Marcus Rashford has done it again! It's 2-0 to England! And here's Harry Kane, rests the trophy! England! Have won Euro 2020. 54 years of hurt. It vanished. Standing in their way today was Iran. Not necessarily a side which could trouble England, you believe, on paper, but stranger things have happened in the opening game of the World Cup. After the anthems, your match commentator is Trevor Gubber. Big fitting goal for England, Alexander Arnold and two other the full backs from the ground and stones. Rice, Bellingham and Mountain midfield, throwing in and still in the front. As for Iran, the two players that stand out is the Kambach and Godos, who both play in the Premier League for Brighton and Brentford, respectively. Carlos Del Cerro Grande from Spain is a match referee for this game 
today. Two gunnots. And now he is in Moonton. And he's still going. Good play. He can batch is there. He can batch. There's Jan. He's crosses to the back post and Dream is there. And off the post. As Stones manages to clear for England. To Rice. Now Bellingham. Jude Bellingham forward for England. Here's Phil Foden. Wonderful play from Phil Foden. Here's Sterling now from Kane's pass. Sterling still going. Finds Chilwell. Move across and there's Kane over. Decent effort from England. And a fantastic start in the end from both sides. This is England's chance first. As that's a wonderful ball out wide to Chilwell. And his cross is just over the bar. Down on the other end. You can match. Set it back. Dresian is crosses headed onto the post by three men. And that's a good effort for Iran as well, their best chance of the game. 90 passes completed for England in percentage compared to Iran's 82. So Iran looking forward with Godox, Zumu, Yukambach. Wonderful play from Yukambach. Dresian. Wonderful play. Balls into a Zamutu and his effort is over. Decent effort in the end from Iran. Again, that's their second real attempt of the game so far. England only that one, you may remember, but that's a decent acrobatic effort. No trouble with Pickford in the England goal. Free kick now for England. And Telegram got almost stood over it. He rips the ball and looking for Eric King. Really heads it away. And it goes behind for England quarter. Good towards the 18 and a half minutes gone. There is England nil, Iran nil. If you just run here on Trevor Sports. Welcome. And Santiago Bernabeu in Madrid. Ball comes towards the back post. Man can't reach it initially. But we can now. Maz was challenging for it in the box. Man went the ball to Trent Hanley and Rob. Who brings the double. Can match. Fetches the ball away. He gives the ball away. Now here's Foden. Foden strike is blocked. Yanked for yet another England corner. Good pressure from England. After he runs early pressure, and that effort from Ferdinand just deflects wide in the end there for England. Nothing from that corner. To the port anyway. And then Grant cleared it. He's a move. Now to your Kambach. Kambach comes forward. Across to Turin. That effort off the post, you may remember, very early on for Iran. There's a move, heads over from the cross from Tarima, who put brilliant ball in with his right foot in the end after cutting, cutting back onto his right foot. And Bigfoot watched it all the way over. It was never troubling the England shot stopper. Sticks. It also plays for Everton. He's spent Chilworth. He's made some mount now for England. Still going mount. Back to Chilwell. Chilwell. Twisting, turning. Still going Chilwell. Now mount. Chilwell once more. He's still in the box. Sterling! In the tunnel. England dominated possession in the last few minutes. And this goal is coming. Wonderful bit of play into Matthew Sterling on the edge of the box. One to a charge to his feet. And the next was to finish off nicely. Chilwell with the ball into him. He's out of his feet. And then second touch, bang, back of the net. One the lingering lead. Stones. Calcio, so he has the second chance to fetch it for England, and he does. Fans further. Back in Tari Kane. To the Mr. Bender Kane! 2 0. England turn it up now. And they are cruising. A 
and that's the fantastic bit of play from England. Phil Furman's clever back flick into Harry Kane, and that's this. He says, let me strike off the post, stones with the ball through, Furman with a clever back flick, one touch away from the defender, and kill the shot in off the post. England 2 0 and cruising. Here's Sterling. Sterling back to Kane. And then back to Kane! 3 0 England! That's the second for the England captain today. And that's an assist for Ryan Sterling. He's been an assist for Phil Foden as well and for Ben Joel in England's three goals so far. Stones into Sterling to Kane, back to Sterling, back to Kane. And Kane says, Thank you very much. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. And he's in the back of the net. <coughs> Excuse me, and I've got a tickle in my throat. And now, Zulu comes forward for Iran. Mount is there, who is fouled by John Stones. Who knows by Maguire, should I say? Is that ball comes into us? Two of me! He's left, but it's saved by Bigford. And then England managed to get the ball clear. When they pull across to two of me at the back post, so it's his first time moving away from Trent, and then it was cleared away by Jude Bellingham. Out of play. You're angry as good as they've got so far as you can batch. He's got players coming forward for him. Goes towards the Muzi. He's held up an out here. Muzu. And Maguire watches it go through. The three's brought him back for a foul, I think, for Iran. For a foul by Bellingham. Didn't really notice anything toward in the actual play itself. Let's have a look at the replay. So I was following the ball. Just catch him a little bit late there. Catch as you can, but a little bit late there. But he tries to block the ball for me. Let me know what you think if you, when you're watching this here on Gemma Sports. Free kick, please. Which Regian will take. It was Kanini. He's headed away by England. And Raheem Sterling will pick up the play. And he'll look to break for England. Raheem Sterling. Phil Furden. Raheem Sterling. Sterling with the ball through. He's fast soccer! And he's still the goal! And then they lead by four! That's his hat trick today for the England captain. And when he's on Trevor Sports, the England captain, he cannot stop scoring. What should I say? Not stop scoring. Pop my teeth back in properly. Well, that's an after for Harry Kane today. He only gets at least two goals when he's on Trevor Sports. Does the England captain. But he's got three today. And that's wonderful bit of play. Sterling to Foden, back to Sterling. We know off his man. It's on the move of Harry Kane. He's onside. And he's beyond the goalkeeper. Very bad. He cannot keep that shot out. And England lead. He's extended to four. England four. He ran nil. That's a wonderful goal from Kane. And now, here's Declan Rice, Ben Chilwell, Rice again, Mount, Alexander Arnold picks up, Bowen, who's gone for Foden, from had a decent game, as it's crossing into Kane off the post, and then still in stride, who from had a decent game, but that chance came from the study to Jared Bowen, who got fed, in, who fed the ball by Trent ends in the Arnold and Kane's effort tipped onto the post by the goalkeeper and then pulled wide by Raheem Sterling. Bowen again. And for three minutes. Here's Bellingham now. Onto the captain Kane and goes to Trent in fourth goal for the game. For himself in the game. And then fifth for England. His shot is deflected wide. This is going to be a corner. 
and the defendant had to get touched tight to him that time and allow him have another bit of room to turn it away. Corner then to be taken by Clint Alexander Arms. Wazir will come on for Muzu. And the ball's in towards Kane. He's a flip out to Bellingham, whose effort is saved. Wonderful effort from Drew Bellingham. He's going for another England corner. Drew Bellingham brought it under Spellwell and then fired it towards goal. I think Kane has been in an offside position. Blocking the goalkeeper's eye line. Now Kane. Alexander Arnold. Down line for Kane. England captain looking to try and create a goal. And will be holding in the corner. Always in the corner and goes into us. Turbo with them come back into effort. And just wide. And almost marked a first competitive senior England game for Jared Bowen in the major tournament with a goal live from that effort just now at the wide of the post. And there is the full time whistle. England and Gareth Southgate off to a comfortable win in the World Cup. Thanks to an entry from Harry Kane and a goal from Raheem Sterling. Fernand played his part. So did Sterling in the game, but Kane will be probably the man of the match. England 4, he ran nil. Well, a fantastic result that was for England. Their biggest opening win at the opening stages of a World Cup. And Gareth Southgate keeping up a unique um, a challenge for him. Once again, that uh, his sides have won the opening game of every major tournament uh, that they have been to so far. Well, it wouldn't be right that I do this all by myself today. So I'm delighted to say with me is Trevor Hansen and Trevor Hill. And they'll be with us for the rest of the tournament to review all the games that we're going to go through today. So Trevor, first and foremost, got to go. What did you make of England's performance today? Well, uh, it's difficult playing in the, the midday sun in Madrid, in the Bernabeu. It's hot, it's humid, it's very, very tricky to play. Um, I think 4-0 possibly flatters England if I'm being brutally honest I thought Iran had their chances and England never looked completely 100% comfortable but after that second go I think it, the Iranian heads dropped and that allowed England to sort of sort of move on well Trevor a lot was made of Harry Kane in the last tournament so the fact that he didn't score until the knockout stages he's off with a mark with a brilliant hat trick he was great today and, and sometimes I feel for Kane in big occasions for England he tends to want to sort of move into that false nine, almost like an attacking midfielder role within the, the midfield. I think today it was great. He was pushing forward a lot more and uh, uh, the team was very much rallying around him today. I think that midfield um, um, helped to England today. Well, little words on that England midfield, Trevor. Um, Jude Bellingham uh, was chosen to partner Declan Rice uh, in the midfield along with Mason Mount. What did you make of the call in the end? I like the way the England midfield looks. I think... They have got, if they need it, perhaps the wiser heads. Uh, you know, a, a, a Jordan Henderson, a Calvin Phillips also available. But I think uh, youth and uh, uh, you got the season Bellingham had. How could you not pick him? Well, indeed. Well, making their uh, return to the World Cup is Scotland. You've, over the, you've overwhelmingly voted them to be involved in World Cup action. So why don't we see how they get on? They had the evening game uh, playing the USA and Seville. It was a cracking contest, and after the anthems, your match commentator is Trev Motson. Hello and welcome to the second game in Group B between Scotland and the United States. This is the Scotland side 
Lyndon Dykes leads the line up front. Watch out for the good runs of John Fleck and John McGinn. Two players on their day can be pretty good. And Billy Gilmore is a very good player to have come off the bench. As for the United States, who appear again in another World Cup, Timothy Ware leads the line up front. And you might know there's a few familiar names. Tim Ream, Christian Pulisic and Zach Steffen, who plays for Manchester City. Great atmosphere here in Seville for this second game in Group B. As I say, we're in Seville. The last time this uh, stadium held to the World Cup game, it was that infamous match in 1982 between West Germany and uh, France when that famous collision between uh, between uh, Howell Schumacher and Patrick Battiston happened when Battiston ended up with two with cracked vertebrae and two broken teeth. As the ball played in there, and Timothy Ware has scored. Well, it's not the start Scotland would have wanted here in Seville. And Timothy Ware gets it. the US off to a very, very good start here. It's a great moment for Greg Berhalter and his, and his boys, but uh, not so for Steve Clark. So Ludby Cross and really the Scottish defence was at sixes and sevens, hard and fast asleep really just floated in there and it was well the goalkeeper might have to take a little bit of the blame there because he came for a ball which I don't think he was going to get Scotland appearing in their first World Cup incident this is 1998 Craig Brown was the manager then they haven't actually been managed in any World Cup before or since to get out the group phases here's McGinn Robertson crossing in there and be picked up here by Patterson Good skills, McGinn, John McGinn, yes for Scotland, John McGinn, and just listen to the noise in Seville, Scotland won, USA won, what a good comeback by Steve Clark's men in this World Cup game, well let's see it again on the replay, Patterson doing all the hard graft here, Puts the ball back, there's McGinn, and in off the post. Beyond Zach Steffen. And it's a really good game here in Seville. Might have got a slight deflection, but John McGinn will not care one job. 1-1. One, one. McGinn again. And I'm in there. Fleck. Oh, sure, he was elbowed there by McKenney. Oh, certainly foul there. Let's see if he was elbowed here. No, just a push. Robinson with a three kick. Well, Scottish supporters singing always look on the bright side of life. Got a little bit of musical genius from the late great Eric Idle. I suppose when you're a Scotland fan you've got to be philosophical, haven't you? Here's where. Now then, Rayner in a bit of space over on the far side. There are four Americans joining him there. One of them is Ware, and that's tipped onto the crossbar brilliantly. Well, that could have been a, an almighty problem there for Scotland. Adams from, for the US. Here's Chelsea's Christian Pulisic. Ball played in there. Looking for Ross Rayner. Comes to Dest. And still destined. Scotland having a problem with two. And Robertson has brought him down. It's a penalty. And the Scots don't like this. I'm telling you now. I'd have to look at a replay. Did look a tackle from behind from first viewing. Let's have a look at it again. And they made an absolute... Well, I guess that Robertson has to be deemed the guilty party. Des was clearly brought down. Here's Pulisic. What a moment for him against David Marshall. He's at the bar, but Musa scores on the rebound. And the United States lead for the second time. And Scotland have to do it all over again and come from behind the second time around.
Pulisic with the penalty hit it well enough but hit the bar but it was and he was very fortunate that Musa was coming in on the follow up and the US lead again here in Seville and Scotland have to bounce back now a second time half an hour gone here it's all been happening here in Seville in this Group B game Lyndon Dykes for Scotland here's Robertson yes he's made a man just like he did for Liverpool in it FA Cup semi-final when he gave a penalty away he came back and scored he's done exactly the same here in Seville for Scotland and twice the Scots have been behind in this game and twice now they're level and the captain setting a real captain's example we've had four goals in this game and we haven't even played 32 minutes the US making an absolute dog's dinner of clearing it there's no question about that Dykes laying the ball in and first time on the right foot well Andy Robertson renowned for his left foot in shooting abilities not really renowned for his right footing abilities but he's absolutely put a scorcher in there and he's made it 2-2 Tierney McTominay Fleck Armstrong Scotland now playing with a bit more confidence since the equaliser the second equaliser that is again here's Patterson Taking on Robinson. Still going, Patterson. Stuart Armstrong. John McGinn. Oh, brilliant save from Zach Steffen. Another good Scottish move again. Patterson involved again on the right. Cut inside. Lovely play between him and McGinn, which actually finished off with, and Stuart Armstrong too, which finished off with McGinn. Almost making it pay. Here comes the corner. Dykes with a header, but just too high. Scotland almost very close to going 3 2 ahead in this ever excited, ever changing first half here. Three minutes to half time, still 2 2. Good game of football, this. It's almost been played like a, a Premier League game at the moment or an FA Cup game. Here's Dykes! Oh, wonderful save from Zach Steffen. Well, another mistake here. Tim Ream with the mistake. Dykes getting in there. The QPR man and forcing the best out of Manchester City. Zach Steffen. Brilliant piece of goalkeeping. Going into the second half, with which we've had just over seven minutes. Here's John McGinn. Fleck, John Fleck, another good save again from Stefan. Well, certainly McGinn has got the taste for it this afternoon, or this evening rather. So to his Fleck, Stefan up to the challenge. McKenny. Renner again on the right, he's done some good running. Cooper's really failed to... Oh, that's a good ball, Musa! Well, really, under the circumstances, should have had his second goal tonight. Reina with a lovely ball in. And Musa should have had his second goal and the US's third. Armstrong. Fleck. Played nearly 67 minutes of this game. Good beer the World Cup. 2-2 to score, break it to Scotland again Armstrong, Patterson again Fleck another side to a goal and Stefan again has to produce another magnificent save well, they're certainly having a go here to Scots and you can't blame them for it Tierney it. 
Fleck. Roberts. Dykes. Armstrong. And the free kick given. Now will the yellow card come out here? No. It was a foul by Robinson. But he's right on the edge of the area. Double inch. That would have been a penalty to Scotland. Andy Robertson. What a moment for him now. With 20 minutes to go. Robertson gets a deflection. Then off the wall. That's the problem when it's right close to the edge of the penalty box. Armstrong. McGinn. And again, Patterson. He's done really well for me tonight on this right hand side. And he's doing well again. All the way back to Jack Stefan. His kick is not the best. McTominay. Tim Ray now should be able to get it away now, but he hasn't. And Scotland now are buzzing. They feel that they can win this. It's got McTominay! Pulls that shot wide. Well, the Americans really making. A complete mess of trying to clear it. A Horlick, you should, you couldn't really say. And McTominay got a bit excited. Should have scored. Less than we've got about two minutes to go to the end. Here's Dykes now. Can Scotland pinch it right at the death? It's been a terrific game. Here's Forrest. The substitute is onside. It's Forrest for Scotland. Took too long, but he's fed Patterson. There's an advantage played as well. Still Patterson, Scotland have a chance here. Still Patterson, he's still going on. Free kick to Scotland. In the very last minute of normal time. Referee been very lenient with the cards tonight. He's been very reluctant to dig into his pocket. Patterson fouled there. Now then bit more of a better range just to the right of centre for Robertson can he nick it at the end Robertson deflected and wide and with that will it be the last chance for Scotland but even so I mean to come from twice behind is a great achievement in itself and that is all that is that so a good point really for Scotland although when Steve Clark looks at the final analysis he'll feel that it should have been all three but a point will do for starters and they're still very much alive in Group B it's finished here in Seville in a terrific game Scotland 2 the United States of America 2 well uh, brilliant game but you definitely feel looking at that that potentially Scotland should have had a bit more um, from that then Trevor yeah I, th I think so I think Scotland uh Gave a good account to themselves. Really good attacking football. I think that the challenging thing is for both these sides is they both knew they had to win this game uh, to really be sort of a huge factor in the contest. And, I, and what I mean by that, this was a game you couldn't afford to lose. And I think uh, Scotland's defensively looks look caught out. Uh, they created enough chances. They just couldn't take them. It's a, it's a Scotland problem, isn't it? What do you think, Scotland? Their next game will be around, Trevor. What would you... Uh, predictions for that game well this is usually the point where Scotland struggle with uh, anything's uh, to go by uh, uh, it's always uh, the sort of the the South American or the sort of Asian side that's that uh, uh, Scotland play and they struggle against so I think for Scotland a huge psychological barrier needs to be broken here they need to be the run they know that because then they've got England in the final game um, and that really is going to be key for them. So I think it's going to be tense. But yeah, they could beat around. They were a real shout of getting through. Well, now it's time to go ahead and uh, have a look at the other two games that was played today. We'll start off with the European champions in real life. Not in the world of Trevor Sports, mind you. Uh, Italy took on Ecuador today. For the Italian side today, Insani, uh, Immobile and Berardi were chosen to be the main uh, cent uh, attacking forces for them. Chiellini and Bonucci were chosen at central half with Donnarama, that rock-solid defence. And Spinazzola, sadly injured in the quarterfinals in Euro 2020, returns uh, such a creative force that he was. In the midfield, that remains Giorginio, a year in which he won the European Championships and the Champions League, anchoring this Italian side. 
They took on Ecuador today, led by Enna Valencia, uh, a player which is definitely uh, uh, standing out among uh, the, the, the cat among the pigeons on this Ecuadorian side. Uh, it was a really, really great game to watch. Uh, your commentator for this one is Triff Champion. So here we go. So Insagi is going to take this free kick, putting it through to Berardi. To Berardi, now to Locatini now. Locatini to Berardi, but it's a great clearance from the Ecuadorian team. One hit, and it, oh, it's hit the post! Insagi has hit the post! But that was a great start for, uh, for Italy, but that was a great clearance from the Ecuadorian defender. But one hit, and I'll tell you what, Insagi. Uh, so now Ecuador just going through now, can they get past now, look at he passes through to Immobile, Immobile passing it through, he has got through but he, the defenders have just caught him up now, look at he now passes it to Berardi, Berardi, hey! oh it's hit the post, Italy have hit the post, again, but Berardi, Berardi's got a chance to shoot, yes, brilliant, absolutely brilliant goal, Berardi, what a chance! And I tell you what, he's took that well after he hit that post. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, Berardi just hit the post on the left hand side, but he luckily got the ball back. No one was closing him down until the last minute, but through the legs of the Ecuadorian defender and passed as a keeper. But I tell you what, great, great um, match for Italy at the moment. They have been absolutely dominant. Ecuador need to step up a gear. But 1 0 to Italy the, from the European champions. So Italy are still with the Spinola now to Jorginho now to Immobile. Immobile. Oh! Was that on the edge? Was that a penalty? Was that being a free kick? We'll have to find out from the referee. He's just having a word with one of the Ecuadorian defenders. I think that might have been... I'll tell you what, that is right close to the edge. That is right close to the edge of the box. And it was a free kick. So here we go. Can Insagi that? Insagi to make it 2-0. Oh, he's hit the wall. He's got a chance again. Oh, it's... Oh, that was a chance for Italy again. So Insagi hit the wall, but it was a, a great block. It was a great block. So corner now for Italy. Uh, short one to Lorenzo now. To Berardi. Oh, is that a penalty? It is. It's, it is a penalty. Mendes is absolutely fuming. And some of the Ecuadorian players are absolutely fuming at the referee because they think it wasn't a penalty. Well, let's have a look at it again. So Lorenzo, and it was a push from Mendes. It was a push from Mendes. He's absolutely livid. So Jorginho now for making Italy 2 0. Steps up, and it's, and it's a great goal. The keeper caught one hand to it, I believe, but Jorginho is not. Having any of it, he wants to take that goal and he has with that penalty. So 2-0 to Italy. And they're absolutely being dominant with this uh, first half. At the Atletico Madrid Stadium at the one uh, Metropolitana. But fantastic, fantastic start for Italy. But yeah, Mendes just actually pushed him. Uh, Lorenzo, but now Giorgino just caught onto the right, well, left hand side of the keeper. But right side of the goal, and I'll tell you what, that is a great, great penalty, to be fair. But keeper should have done a little bit better. So we're at the uh, second half at Ecuador, still uh, pushing through. Passes it to Estranda now to pass it to Martinez. Oh, he's had the chance! Martinez has had the chance to get back into this game which the first half they've been absolutely terrible Ecuador just uh, I tell you what the defence should have done a little bit better from Italy but Ecuador that was a good chance so Italy on the halfway line Insagi to cross into Immobile Immobile now to Jorginho Jorginho to uh, Spinozola 
now to Locatelli to Insagi now and oh that was a bad bad challenge would that be a quick free kick no it won't it'll be uh, just holding on there but Mendes oh my days that should have been a booking at least that was a nasty challenge but here we go can Insagi now chance to make it no he's going to cross it to Mobile now but nothing out of it now to uh, and uh, say what oh! Tell you what, Bernardi could have had the goal, could have had a great goal of the season. I know mean, this is, would have been a classic. He just volleyed it from the angle that I saw. It looked like it was getting close, but that was a little bit wide. So, uh, good result for. Uh Italy 2-0 winners and off and running and uh, they all know it's about the big game coming up. Uh, Senegal and Netherlands were the final game played today. That uh, was the first game actually played in the tournament. A lovely lunchtime kickoff between those two. The Netherlands themselves, they've not been in the tournament since 2014 but it's looking like total football could be available for them. Their lineup today, Memphis Depay was partnered by Luke de Jong. Jorginho Wijnaldum was partnered in midfield by Frankie de Jong. Potentially Manchester United bound and Martin de Room. Virgil van Dijk captain the side, passed by Stefan de Vigge and Martin de Lidge. And Tillerson was chosen in goal for them. As for Senegal, the African Cup of Nation champions, well, Kurukuyabi, Koyati, Mane stand out, and Loborji, Idrissi Begay is chosen to be the uh, suit, the uh, attacking midfielder or sitting behind Yang. Your commentator for this one is Trev Tilsley. Here we go then. Early doors. KG. We are only a couple of minutes in. An unhopped. Finding one Alden. Thinking about across the first time. He's got Gassimo with him. He's whipped in towards the back stick, looking for De Jong. Uh, straight at the goalkeeper, he just about got something on that. It's almost like he lost his footing. Attack still alive though, here's Dumfries from the Netherlands. Oh, that's a shocking pass and out of play. Here's the replay of that uh, opportunity, the goalkeeper. It was low to his left, was, to be fair to him. Those are difficult to get to. Excellent save. He's Loom now. Mane back once more trying to get past his man and it's a free kick promising position for Senegal might be a little bit far up for shooting but a uh, bit of a body check there it's uh, strikers defending for you always a bit awkward when you find a striker defending it's going to be Niang standing over the free kick thinking about it he's gone for it from distance the goalkeeper flapped at it gets it at the second attempt it was a good effort from the Yang stopped it going over the line and then gobbled up the rebound safety first from the goalkeeper executed it well Van Aanholt now Darun finding Dumfries got a bit of space on the right hand side checks back whips in a slow cross towards Memphis Depay and it's just wide of the mark good build up play here from the Netherlands found the space for Dumfries really well checked back a little bit probably could have got the cross in first time and Depay bit of a slice that one well are we going to have somebody take the lead before half time Van Aanholt's going to try and remedy that situation Still going forward. Whips in across towards De Jong at the back stick. It's a looping header. It's going just over the bar. Look for a split second. It might dip just under the uh, crossbar there. But alas, gravity did not quite do enough. Yeah, just catching the top of the netting. De Jong a little disappointed with that. We're 10 minutes in, both teams again sort of feeling each other out here. Here's Balde. Looking for Guy. And here he is inside the box, goes down. The referee says no. Senegal fans thought it was definitely a penalty. The Netherlands, however, have got their eyes on a counter attack. Here's Memphis to Pike. Looking for Luke de Jong. Back to goal, turns, shoots! It's a great effort! It's off the post and it's in! 
What a superb effort from De Jong. Celebrates with the confetti. And it is truly party time for the Netherlands. Back at a World Cup for the first time since 2014. And they are in the lead in their first game. It's a great turn, great effort. Goalkeeper can do nothing about it. Clipping the inside of the post and going in. Credit to Memphis Depay as well. Threading the needle through four players. They're turning shots. Goalkeeper can do nothing with that. And De Jong gets the Netherlands campaign underway. That goal might just settle the nerves for the Netherlands. Here is Depay. De Jong. Van Aanholt. Netherlands building up ahead of steam again. De Jong. Looking for Wijnaldum, who's made a driving run from midfield. Wijnaldum forces a save out of the goalkeeper. Well, it was nearly two. Relentless attacking pressure from the Netherlands. Wonderful run there from Wijnaldum, and to get a shot on target from that angle was an exquisite effort. Forcing the goalkeeper into a save. Going to get something from the resulting corner. Whipped in towards Dumfries. Header over the bar. Excellent cross. Just got above it. Will he come back to regret that chance later on? We shall see. We've still got half an hour to go here. Don't freeze once more. Wijnaldum. Lovely one-touch play with Darun. Gets it back to Wijnaldum. Knocks it on to De Jong. De Jong from distance. Luke De Jong! Ooh. Well, it was a good effort. Had the goalkeeper worried, had everyone behind the goal worried. Excellent build-up play again here from the Netherlands. De Jong invited to shoot and he took that invitation. Niang, lovely turn. Finding Sadio Mane, switching the play to Bolde. Here's a bit of space for Senegal. And they get their men forward. Cross is blocked and cleared away. De Jong back to Darun. Netherlands just carefully managing their 1-0 lead. Van Aanholt brings the ball into the shade. Finds Depay. De Jong once more. This is wonderful one-touch play from the Netherlands. This is beautiful football. This would be a fabulous goal if they can convert it. And they have! Sumptuous football from the Netherlands. And they take a commanding 2-0 lead. That is total football. Cruyff would be proud of that one. From a perfectionist point of view, that was a beautiful goal. Lovely, one touch, two touch stuff. They tore Senegal apart, they couldn't keep with them. And the finish from De Jong was the perfect, perfect finish for what was a sublime move. Goalkeeper can do nothing about this one either. You've got to say, in terms of total football, that was fantastic. Well, in the wrap-up of that, let's have a look at Group A. As it stands, Italy and the Netherlands both have three points. You feel that a win for either side in the next game confirms their way through. Uh, Italy will go ahead and uh, uh, play Senegal next. Netherlands uh, play Ecuador. Uh, a win for either side sees them comfortably through to the knockout stages and then could be a playoff to say who wins Group A. As for Group B, well, for Group B, delight for England. Uh, they're off and running at the World Cup with their highest goal difference to start. Scotland are ahead of the USA purely on the alphabetical placing of the uh, uh, beginning letter of their country's name. But a point apiece. Scotland know that they've got a big game against Iran that were well beaten England very much favourites to go through as group winners from Group B as for us next on Trevor Sports well we'll start off with Group C and D so we've got the defending world champions and a really special occasion as uh, Lionel Messi and Argentina return to the new camp from all of us thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again very soon bye bye
to put Scotland out of the World Cup. And Arkham Armstrong 